will say, well, if we leave the you'll be stuck on an island with Tories. You'd be stuck on an island with Tories, and Tories have supreme power over them. I mean, being inside the EU or outside the EU isn't going to change the level of support the Tory party gets. You know, it's not going to change anything. You can have, like, for most, for most of the time I was in the European Parliament, it was the Labour Party that were in, was in power. Um, but that's not... Staying with it, you mean that by staying within the EU, you're going to solve the Tory problem. How could you solve the Tory problem by staying within the EU? Because the other thing is there are lots of other Tory parties out there in other member states of the EU that are being elected as well. That's in Ireland, the, the Irish political establishment was saying it's going to be a disaster for Ireland. Ireland took, the Irish political establishment took no notice of the fact that when we joined the Euro, Britain wasn't in there, even though we did two-thirds of the trade outside the Eurozone with Britain and the rest of the world. They didn't take any account of that. I mean, the Remain side keeps saying, well, you know, 50% of our trade is currently in the EU, and that, you know, people from Germany have said we won't trade with Britain once they leave. And Do you, do you think any of that um, has merit? Or? Like, businesses trade for their own reasons. It's got nothing to do with what's the policy. Like, this politics. Yeah. yeah, and they will still continue to do so. Being, it's, it's like a super pseudo nationalism. Yeah. Where it, those within the EU are being protected and their interests, whereas other people from other parts of the world who are just as deserving of these jobs yeah. don't have a right. They don't have the same right. So it should be. <laughs> well, that's, that's my opinion. Bailouts. It was the Germans wanted that in the treaties to make sure that if any country got in financial trouble, there would be no bailouts. And we were bailing out, they were bailing out Ireland, they were bailing out Greece, they were bailing out, and of course you're bailing them out as well. You know, yeah. even though you're not in the euro, you're bailing them out. Um, but they said, oh well, the no bailouts doesn't actually mean no bailouts. That's what the court said. Yeah. They basically said it only means no bailouts if you say it. So you have a, a court that's completely a political court. So. Yeah. That's, that's very undemocratic. A lot of people have voted in all sorts of countries against the EU. Referenda oh, yeah. after referenda. They lost. they lost in France, they lost in Holland, they lost yeah. in Ireland, obviously. But also Greece, and that was really tragic. You know, the EU lost in Greece and then did what they wanted to anyway. If we, if we needed to, we can allow the pound to fall. Which means our exports will do well and people See, get that's more what jobs. With us in Ireland because we couldn't do any of that. We can't do that. We couldn't do that. That's why we had the crisis. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't, uh, you know, uh, interest rates and exchange rates were controlled by by the European Central Bank, and the interest rates were very low because it suited Germany. And the Germans had a massive surplus, and Germany is one of the biggest. They lent us massive amounts. So it was just completely unsustainable, and nobody said hold on, you know. And then, you know, so we, um, the exchange rates, that was because of the interest rates and the exchange rates. We could have, if we were outside the euro, we could have maybe managed it somehow. So we're all paying for it now with all these charges. We have, oh God, it's property Banks. taxes, water charges, uh, refuse charges, the social insurance charges. These are all extra charges on top of what we always pay the tax and, and insurance. Massive. But it's going into bank just, subsidies. And it's all to pay back the German banks who lent us so that the euro can stay alive. I'd like, first of all, to thank you for the, uh, being here today, and um, I'm here um, be, uh, be at the invitation of Green Leaves. So a lot of people might think that um, all of the people on the Leave side are from the right, but in actual fact, Green Leaves is a Green Left organisation. We in Ireland have gone through a number of campaigns in relation to EU treaties. We've had, we're one of the few countries, in fact, in the EU, one of the only countries that has a referendum on all the different treaty changes. And my experience in that is very similar to what I'm looking at now in relation to how the EU machine instills fear into people. And it's a fear that's tactical. It's very important. I mean, when Ireland voted no to the Lisbon Treaty, the EU establishment said that they had to, second time around, because we had to vote again, we didn't give the right answer, that second time around, they had to ensure that they instilled fear in the hearts and minds of the Irish people. And I can see that happening here as well in relation to the debate about what's going to happen. And it, it, it's, it's not unique to, uh, 
to the United Kingdom. And I, I just want to go back to some other countries. Denmark is one of the few countries that had a referendum on the euro. Denmark and Sweden both rejected the euro. France and Ireland both accepted it. Um, Danish, our yeah. Danish had another referendum then in relation to whether they would join the euro. And some of the quotes, it's, uh, one here is, a no will mean a welfare loss of 20 billion kroner. Uh, and this was from the Danish uh, Minister of Finance then, a no will mean, uh, a no uh, will cost 35,000 jobs, that was from the trade unions. Uh, rent will rise after the euro, no, uh, from the uh, Prime Minister. And no will result in more expensive loans, that was from the Danish Liberal Party. I could go on and on, but basically there is nothing new in what's being presented here. <coughs> uh, one of my main reasons in hoping that Britain votes to leave is that it will open the doors for others. But in relation to your own position, you will then be able to negotiate agreements outside of the 28. At the moment, you can only negotiate within the 28 club. Therefore, you're restricted in relation to what you can actually do. Whereas there's a huge market out there, as you know, because a huge amount of your trade is outside the Eurozone uh, with America and the rest of the yeah. world. And there are, you know, the, the commissions are appointed by democratically elected politicians. But how democratic is it to appoint people without any public consultation without any uh, ability to hold those commissioners to account at a national level, without any ability to hold the governments themselves who have appointed them as commissioners to account. It's not democratic, and it's the only, the European Commission is the only institution within the EU that can initiate legislation. So you're depending on the commissions. Oh, that's right. Now, I was watching the debate last night in relation to uh, David Cameron, and he said, David Cameron said that he had, and that Ireland was getting a knocked out, or uh, Britain was getting a knocked out on the ever closer union. Now, this is actually very disingenuous because you can't get an opt-out, and I brought the treaty with me today to just show you that in the protocol, it's quite clear in relation to what member states have signed up to, and they have signed up to the Ever Closer Union, resolved to continue the process of creating an Ever Closer Union among the peoples of Europe, and in, in which decisions are taken as closely as possible with people, etc. But the Ever Closer Union is there, and the only way that can be changed, this is why I'm saying it's disingenuous of... Uh, David Cameron to, to try and present that he's got something. You can't get any changes to the, Lis to the EU constitution or the EU Lisbon Treaty or the treaties or whatever you want to call them without unanimity of all 28 member states. So and therefore there is no change to the <coughs> treaties and what David Cameron is saying he has got is wishful thinking on his part. He hasn't got any changes to the treaties and without those changes you cannot <coughs> uh, uh, be guaranteed that you can do as you wish.